couple of months ago, I brought back this series and I honestly truly underestimated the power this series has on a lot of people. A lot of people were really positive and happy to see it back. I had kind of given it a bit of a, a break, a hiatus, I guess, if you will, um, mostly because I just wasn't sure if people were that interested in it, but I was pretty wrong. And the dedicated, passionate people that love watching these kinds of videos, learning about new music, discovering new music, was more worth anything that I had over whatever I, I thought. It, it, I had a lot of doubts, but I was certainly wrong. So here we go again, Kieran Leonard, Grapefruit, and we have, again, another Undiscovered Gems to talk about. One of the most exciting and theatrical releases I stumbled upon a few years back that I have heard over the course of the 2010s. This was such a good discovery. It is a whirlwind of ideas and expressions and so much creativity bursting at the seams coming through on this ridiculously, um, I guess, uh, mammoth sized rock album. I mean, we're, we're going from like, you know, 10 minute songs to 16 minute songs. Uh, Kieran Leonard does not hold back. Secret Police immediately sets you up for a ridiculously dramatic journey with the sprawling vocals, the violins, the strings that come through immediately. Just give this album such a unique edge to it. I mean, the guy's got his influences, but when you kind of factor in the fact that he was like 20 when he wrote this and made these songs and He's had albums before this as well, by the way. He's a pretty prolific and consistent guy. And uh, at this point, he's about my age-ish, but like, you can see he's been putting out albums since like 2010, 11-ish time, which, you know, I, I, I was at school. I, I was at school during that time. So the, the, this guy was like at school making these mammoth-sized, experimental art rock albums which i find absolutely insane this is like the time i found out chief keef is like a year or two younger than me so that guy was like making finally rich when i was going to those like bloody career advice sessions trying to find out what the fuck i wanted to do with my life and chief keef was out here making a bloody <laughs> like uh, trap drill classic for the ages uh, 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 what? So with stuff like that, you kind of have to just go, fuck it. Who cares if this guy has his influences? Who cares if you can, you know, uh, point to this artist from this era with this sound from these songs? The guy is so young doing it really well as well, by the way. Like I wouldn't do a video on this if, I, if it wasn't done so bloody well. Pink Fruit, one of the mammoth sized songs, 16 minutes. It goes through so many journeys within one track. It starts out with the mathy rock guitars, which sound really fantastic. Obviously calling back to the nineties with that. Um, even some, you know, modern day stuff as well. That's, you know, leaning towards a math rock era. But yeah, it sounds so good. It sounds really flashy and also fun to an extent as well. But of course, Kieran has such a unique voice that he kind of comes through and elongates so many notes and words in such a like Tom York fashion. I think Radiohead is a pretty fair comparison for this album, particularly with these vocals and um, just the way the tracks are structured and the way that they're layered and the way that they develop. Although you could more liken the way they develop to some more like prog rock stuff to be fair. But this track, man, the way it like descends into chaos and madness and the way it kind of like teases you into it, it just sounds so, so good. And the atmosphere he's able to conjure up while doing it is sublime. And I was having to like, you know, be kind of um, pleased with myself, not in that kind of way. But um, when I got to the end of this track, right, and there's a way it sort of like develops and the vocals and the instrumental kind of like comes together in such like a black country new road way. And I then found out in an interview with the quietest that Black Country New Road, I actually really admire this guy. And this album was 2016, by the way, and of course, Black Country New Road, I mean, didn't drop their first album until 2020. I don't know, man. I think there's some influence. I think they listen to this guy and listen to albums like this 
and think, yeah, we want to kind of create a similar thing. And that's kind of mad because we've seen how Black Country New Road have really risen up the echelons in, you know, modern British rock music and even beyond like Britain now. But that's, that's kind of mad. They specifically cited Don't Make Friends With Good People as well as one of the tracks that they were absolutely loving at the time. And yeah, the way that track is constantly shifting, the transitions are constantly ever, ever growing. Um, the way the guitars sound, the way that there's like these layers of extra instrumentation that are just so bizarre sounding. Man, I, I think Kieran Leonard was onto something and has done quite a bit more for this windmill era of bands than people actually realize. But yeah, that's the other thing as well. Some of these tracks, like again, Pink Fruit, for example, like there's this jazzy instrumentation that comes, you know, blurting through in such a fun way, while also sounding kind of oddly ugly. But, you know, if you can kind of get with it, you end up appreciating it rather than thinking it sounds terrible. The guitar on Ondor Gongo is absolutely sublime, by the way. Um, the way, again, the, the there's these whirlwind sections where, you know, um, the vocalist Kieran just descends into madness in a very like Tim Buckley kind of fashion. The track after this, again, is, is very similar in terms of the vocal uh, connection to Tim and also the violins work so well with this track too. It just always feels like there's something exciting going on, like there's just this constant shifting and growing the original idea into something a bit more manic, a bit more mental, a bit more insane to be quite frank. I mean by the final track Fireplace you do hit a point where like yeah the patterns, uh, the familiarity of with the way they sh they are structuring these tracks is kind of becoming pretty standard across the album but it never feels like boring or repetitive you know, it never feels like he's just doing the same thing over and over again. It always feels slightly different and on this particular track he's got a female vocalist coming through and she adds a nice um, juxtaposition with the track as well. I think it sounds really good. It reminds me of something like Squid would do, honestly. Um, not Squidward from, uh, you know, Spongebob. I mean Squid, the band Squid would do. I feel like they offered something similar on their album from last year. This track again, it's just kind of like a dead ringer for what bands like this are doing at the moment. Exeter and Services is a track I want to highlight too because I think there's a bit more of a uh, lo-fi energy to this one, particularly with the kind of like math rock inspirations, but particularly in the vocals I'm reminded of something like Brave Little Abacus with how rustic and lo-fi and you know tattered and broken around the edges it sounds. Uh, again, these kinds of influences are worth mentioning because I think Kieran Leonard incorporates everything that he brings into this album so so well and while I'm not going to completely point to him and say he's the reason for bands like Black Country New Road or even Squid um, because I don't think that's entirely true I just want to mention those bands here because again they've mentioned him and I think there is something in how these tracks are developed they're structured the way that they're, they're sounding kind of makes you wonder how much influence he's ended up accidentally having like without really being that big of an artist because they're aware of him so it's pretty impressive to hear this from 2016 but again i'm not going to say that he's inventing this sound because he has his own influences as well but i just think if you're a fan of this new wave of british rock music this is an absolute undiscovered gem because it doesn't get talked up anywhere near as much as it should. It is fantastic. There are moments that are absolutely sublime. The vocals are just so engaging. He is super dramatic and theatrical, which I think could probably rub people the wrong way, but I actually really appreciate the way he uses his voice and everything just feels like a new event. Every time you hit a new track, just feels like a new event resetting and he's offering something slightly different every time and it's such a great listen. It's an hour long but it's certainly worth your time and um, yeah this has easily earned its place in the Undiscovered Gems series because I can see a big 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 crowd of people loving this kind of thing but I do not see that big crowd yet but perhaps after this video you're going to check it out and you're going to love it. So thank you for watching as always hopefully you enjoyed this video Hopefully you agree with me if you've heard this album already, please let me know in the comments. If you haven't, go check it out, then come back to me. You know I love you guys doing that and telling me what you think. 
and yeah share it around if you like it get this guy more known he know he needs he needs more love for this album because he gave us something special here and i think it has potential to be a bit of a cult classic so let me know your thoughts do subscribe if you haven't already have a good day and goodbye